Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all well. In today's video, we have another Xbox Series X, which has a no power issue. So when you plug some power into this one, what happens? Let's find out. Plug a bit of power. We get a beep and then a little bit of a white light, and then it switches off. Right, eject button, same. And obviously bind button's not gonna work. Right, so let's get this one taken apart and see what is going on. Right, with the main parts dismantled, let's quickly bring up our multimeter. What we're gonna do is just quickly, first of all, test the power supply. So unplug that, the main voltage um, rail, and then uh, for the processor board, and then unplug the voltage here for the south bridge board. Let's just unclip that to give ourselves a little bit more room, like so, right. We're going to plug in some power. And I think the 12 volt power supply is going to be fine, but let's just quickly check. So black probe in one side, red probe in the other side, and we should get 12 volts going across all of these phases all the way down. All right, as you can see, you've got 12 volts. 11.8, that's close enough. Yeah, All right, this cable here, which powers the Southbridge board, let's just check we're getting output of 12 volts. I believe we are on this as well. Yeah, right, so we know the power supply is good. All right, so let's just quickly unplug that, lift off the power supply, put that to one side. Next thing to check real quickly to see if there's a short on the Southbridge board or the actual main APU board, All right? So the way you do that is very quickly just pop your multimeter into continuity mode. And that's the mode that beeps when you put the probes together, like so. Like so. And then we're literally gonna just check across these two pins here. All right, we get no beep, which is good, which means the Southbridge board has no short on it. And then we get, oh, we do get a beep on the main APU board. Let's just check that. See, that's beeping. So that means there's some kind of short circuit on the APU board. So what that does mean is we can That should have come out on the, with the console. Anyhow, it didn't. Um, what that does mean is we can disconnect the APU board. All right, we can actually take that off. Like so. Make sure that cable is out of the way. As I say, that should have came off and that should have stayed in the case. But obviously it was disconnected for some reason. Uh, let's uh, remove the, uh, as I say, the actual APU board. All right, so we've got the main, uh, get to the main APU board. Just literally pull off the two sections away from each other, feed the ribbon cable through, and then you put it to one side. And now you're down to the main APU board. All right, now what we need to do is get this uh, RF shield off and then we can take the board completely off and have a quick check of it. 
Just going to double check again now we're here to make sure we have got the short on this board. So just touching the legs now of the actual connector, power connector, and you've got a short there somewhere. Now, normally a short on here, it is one of the MOSFETs, but let's uh, get this shield off like so. Pop that off, put that to one side. Undo the heat sink clamp. And then we can actually get to have a proper look at the board itself just by pulling it away from the heat sink. It will be a little bit sticky, first of all, because of the thermal paste that's underneath it. Off it pops. And then we can start having a proper look at the APU board. Right, so let's get under the microscope so we can have a closer look. Right, so here we are under the uh, microscope. And one thing that I could, you wouldn't be able to tell on camera, but what I could tell, as soon as I lifted the uh, APU board off of the heatsink, I could smell burning, right? So uh, that is what I mentioned earlier. That is going to be one of the MOSFETs that's blown. So anyhow, we'll have a quick visual inspection, right? So you've got all those caps down that side. You've got all of your RAM along here, and then you've got your main processor, but skipping all the way across over here, you can see a row of MOSFETs, and then you can see that MOSFET is blown. Now, the trouble with this is they do blow at quite high temperatures, and I don't know if you can actually make that out, but along here, this top side here is quite a lot, it looks like, of the actual motherboard has been damaged, right? Which means we might have an issue when we go to replace this. But fear not, let's give it a go, right? So um, we're gonna come in with our heat gun and warm this entire area up and then try and remove this uh, MOSFET and we'll see if the motherboard is damaged underneath or not. So these two pads are joined, which they should be. And I believe that this pad here and this pad over here, where that first pad is, is all joined. So we might be lucky here. What we can do is just um, add some jumper wire there just to make sure that that pad is nice and strong. Uh, and then make sure that nothing else is damaged underneath the layers of the motherboard. And then we should be able to replace the MOSFET, right? Let me just show you as an example. Here is a good motherboard. There we go, right? So you can see on the top here, if you follow this pad, it goes all the way, top two pins this side on the right-hand side, goes all the way across to the first pin and then to that capacitor there, right? So that's one single pad. Nothing is connected to the second pad from here. Um, this capacitor is moved, right? Normally the capacitor is over there. So we've got these two pads connected to this pad from this plane to this plane over here, all the way across the top. And obviously all these pads are separate along here. So we just need to make sure that when we do the rework on our damaged board, that this pad is not shortened to this pad. These pads are not shortened to any of these. The, 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 the main pad under here, it looks like a ground pad underneath here. And we are all good, all right? All of these are connected to each other, so that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get a little bit of jumper wire. We'll put it across there just to make it a little bit stronger. 
Um, although it's probably not needed because the MOSFET itself will have a pad which is joined all the way across, but we'll just add a tiny little bit of jumper wire just to make sure that we bridge uh, these two uh, pads where they should be connected. Uh, and then we'll give everything a tidy up and put some uh, solder mask uh, on this or PCB mask on there to make sure nothing is shorting out. Right, so let's do that. Right, so with some conformal coating added, and then I've just tinned the pads as well. So you can see the conformal coating or the uh, solder mask in green along the top there, just between these pads along here. So let's just make sure that we've still got continuity between these, uh, that capacitor and these capacitors. Yes, we do, good, all right, that should all beep. More importantly, let's make sure we haven't got continuity between this first pad here and the top pad. So that one should beep, this shouldn't beep. No, it doesn't, good. And the same for this pad over here. That one doesn't beep, good. All of these pads down the bottom and to the left hand side, right hand side, sorry, are connected. So they will all beep, all right, which is fine. That's how it should be. And the same for all these ones down the left hand side. They're all connected. Let's just make sure we have got uh, no shorts between these top row pads because they are all separate data channels. Good, no shorts between there, all right? Now, more importantly, if we flip it back over to the power adapter, do we still have a short on the 12 volt rail? So if I put one probe that side, one probe the other side, no, no short. So the short has gone as well. Good, right, so next thing, let's get a replacement MOSFET and then get it soldered on. So I'm gonna heat up the area first of all, then add a little bit of flux, and then finally come in with the MOSFET and then push it down to make sure it's nice and secure. Right, we can continue giving it a proper clean up in a minute, but let's just quickly make sure that we still got continuity between those two. Yes, we do. Make sure we've got no short between those two points. No, we don't. Make sure we haven't got a short between uh, these two points. No, we don't. Perfect, look at that, great. Right, so. Flip back over to our power connector. Do we have the short? No, the short is gone still, which is good. So I am going to clean up this area just a little bit more, get rid of that excess flux, uh, and then we'll put everything put, put back together and give everything a test. Right, so there we go, everything put back together. Let's give it some power and an HDMI cable in there there we go like so let's hit the power button do we get a white light yes we do excellent and the white light staying on do we get video output yes we do perfect so there you go video to show you how to repair a well, one second power on power off issue on an xbox series x uh, there's multiple reasons why you would get that kind of error uh, on an Xbox Series X. This is just one of them. Uh, normally, uh, I, when I've seen it, you know, quite quite often the actual MOSFETs are blown, like you saw uh, in the video today. We were lucky, right? There's some of the traces on the motherboard weren't damaged as much as as I've seen previously. When those MOSFETs do go, they tend to weld themselves to the motherboard. Uh, and then when you're removing them, you're just literally breaking the layers on the motherboard, which makes them impossible to repair. We got lucky this time. We're not always that lucky. 
but good to see this one working. So if you found the video useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up. It really does help us out. And please consider subscribing to the channel. So thanks very much for watching. See you all again next week.